Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about exponential functions, exponential growth functions specifically and how to graph them. Well, what is an exponential first of all? Well, you've seen y equals x squared before, right? And that's a parabola, that's a quadratic. But what about y equals two to the x? Now notice there is a difference here. Here, the base is the x and the exponent is the two. Here, the base is the two and the exponent is the x. So an exponential function is a function where the x is the power. So here you have x to the power of two. Here you have some number to the power of x. That's what an exponential function looks like, a basic one. And these things get really big, really fast. I mean, you've heard people say something is growing exponentially. Yeah, that's what this is. So the first thing we're gonna do with exponential functions here is learn how to graph a really basic one. And as you can imagine, because these functions get so big so quickly, we're gonna be using negative one, zero, and one to graph all of our exponential functions, okay? Just three points. So the graphing here is super easy. You know, it's really short, it's really brief. Okay, so here's how this goes. We're gonna plug in negative one for x, and we get two to the power of negative one. So two to the negative one. And what is two to the negative one? Well, we have learned in the past that anything to the negative one power means reciprocal, means flip it. So this is actually one half. Now you have a zero, two to the power of zero. Well, anything to the power of zero is one. So now we have a one here, two to the first power is two. Okay, so now that we have all three of our points here, we can graph them. And what we're gonna get is negative one comma one half. So here's zero, zero, negative one is over here, comma one half, which is half a box, which is right there. 0 comma 1, well here's 0, 0, here's 0, 1, right there. And then finally 1 comma 2. Here's 1, here's 2, and you're there. Now this is creating a curve. This is not a line. This is a curve. And the right side of this curve, starting with this first point, is basically half of a parabola. So that's how you want to draw this. You want to start at the first point that you have here and pretend like you're drawing a parabola and make it nice and round and curve-like. And then when you reach the edge of your graph, draw a, draw an arrow. Okay, so what about the other side of the graph? What, what's happening over here on this side? Well, if we had, you know, put more numbers into our table, like negative two and negative three and so on and so forth, you'd see the numbers were getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but they never get to zero. What's gonna happen there is, this was a half, this would actually be one quarter, this would actually be one eighth, this would actually be one sixteenth. It's getting closer and closer and closer, but you never get to zero because one over any number, no matter how big, does not get to zero, it just gets really, really tiny. So what's happening here is that this graph here will continue to curve. So this curve right here, I want you to think of it like an airplane landing, okay? I know it's a little extreme to land this steeply, but you're landing on a runway and it's the same kind of curve, except you're never actually gonna to touch the runway because that would mean that you're getting a zero. So you're landing in pl the, landing the plane from, from right to left here and you wanna curve down and get closer and closer, but never actually touch and then put your arrow there. So what do you call the X axis in this case? If you have a barrier to a graph that you can never get to, because like I said, this will be one over bigger and bigger numbers, it'll never get to zero. This is called an asymptote. In this case, it's a horizontal asymptote. Okay, you can also have vertical ones. Vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptote. And an asymptote for, at least in this case, is an impenetrable barrier that your graph cannot get to, it cannot cross, all right? You can get closer and closer and closer and closer to it, but you'll never go through it. And that's, when I, when I say the word asymptote, that's what I'm referring to, okay? We're gonna see vertical ones coming up later, but right now we're dealing with horizontal asymptotes. So the horizontal asymptote is, in this case, the x-axis. Later on, it might be other things, but the horizontal asymptote is like the runway that you're landing the plane on. Before we go on to the next example, I wanna look at uh, the same exact problem uh, done on Desmos. And this is drawn perfectly because, well, let's face it, you know, Desmos will do it perfectly better than I can do it on a pen tablet. And you can see here are the three points that we graphed. Here's negative one comma half, zero comma one, and one comma two. And if you just look at this side of it only, just this side, it looks like half a parabola, right? 
Okay, if you just look at that one half of it, it looks like half parabola going up. And that's what I ha that's how we're gonna be graphing it. We're gonna do our three points, and we're gonna go be, be going up through those three points and creating half a parabola on one side. And then on the other side, we landed that plane, right? Now, if you look at this picture here, it looks, first of all, it's nice and smooth and curvy. There's no straight parts to it. But also, it looks like it's crashing into the into the x-axis, but it's actually not. If I, even if I go down to here, it looks like it's like completely like just sitting on the x-axis. But if you zoom in enough, you'll start to see that there actually is a little bit of room there. We've got to zoom in quite a bit, though, because the number is really tiny. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Okay. And now you can see there actually is a gap here, and that gap is let's see 0 0.0000153 that's how tiny that is so that's what it looks like and this is the structure here let's go back to the chalkboard and do a couple more examples okay so we're going to graph a few more functions and we're going to state the domain in, in the range here so for f of x equals 3 to the power of x we're going to use the same negative 1 0 and 1 3 to the power of negative 1 is well it looks like this three to the negative one but what is that that's a flipped three right so this becomes one third and three to the zero anything to the zero is just one and then three to the one well anything to the first power is itself so it's just three all right so you have those three points there and now we'll come down to the graph here negative one comma one third well here's negative one on the x and you're going to go up one third of a box on the y and end up right about there 0 comma 1 would be here and 1 comma 3 would be here and hopefully you can see that same but half up parabola going to the right so just do your best to make something that looks like a parabola and then put an arrow on the end there and then when you reach the edge of the graph you put a little arrow after you get to the edge now on this side we need to land the plane on the asymptote but not touch the asymptote right so just do your best i realize by hand it's a little bit tough to do and that was y equals 3 to the x. This is y equals or f of x equals negative 2 to the x, which means that it's going to be upside down. So how do we handle this? Well, this is still 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half, but there's a negative here, so there's also a negative here. This is 2 to the 0, which is 1, but there's a negative on this, and there's a negative on this. And finally, negative 2 to the 1, is negative two. So we've got negative, basically we, everything we, we, would have, we would have gotten normally, but with the negatives on them, right? And how does that affect us? Well, let's see. Negative one comma negative one half. Well, here's negative one down one half a box. Here's zero comma negative one, which is here. And here's one comma negative two, which is here. And what you'll see is you still have that half parabola, but it's just going downwards this time. So now you got something going like that, and then put your arrow there. Now, coming back the other way, you're still gonna have this as your asymptote, as your impenetrable barrier here. So you're just going to land the plane, so to speak, without touching, and there you go, okay? So if you have a negative, everything gets flipped upside down, and the asymptote is now above the function rather than below the function. Okay, this next example is a little different because there's a number in front of the exponential part here. And what does that number do? Well, we've been graphing things that are in the form of y equals b to the x, where b is a number that's your base and then x is your exponent. But you can also put a number here, okay, like in this case there's a two, and that number is called the dilation constant, and I'll call it a, so dilation. And dilation just means stretch. And this thing is going to make the, it's going to stretch the function vertically. So how does that affect, you know, the way you graph it? Well, the easiest way to handle this is to go ahead and make your table. So X and Y. And we're going to use the same three X's as, be, as before. So negative one, zero, and one. But we're only going to worry about doing this part first. That's the exponential part. So this is still going to be three to the negative one, which is one third. And this is going to be three to the zero which is one, and this would be three to the one, which is three. And then if there is a stretch number, you just multiply all the numbers in the Y column by that number. In this case, there's a two there. And we get two thirds, two, and six. And that's all there is to it. So if there's a stretch number, just multiply your Y column by that number after you're done making your table. So in this case, we get negative one comma two thirds, which is right about there. 
0, 2, which is right about there, and 1, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is right about there. And there you go. Now, what's the domain of this function? Well, for, all, for exponential functions, the domain is going to be all real numbers because the domain tells you where your function is in the x direction. And this thing, this function goes all the way forever and ever to the left, forever and ever to the right, and everything in between. So the domain is all real numbers. But the range tells you what y's this function passes through. And this function does not pass through all of the y's in negative infinity to positive infinity. It actually never goes below zero. In fact, it never even gets to zero. So your range is gonna be y is greater than zero, not equal to, no. Because if you know if you if you manage to get down to the x-axis, then yeah, y equals zero, but you don't get there. So y is greater than zero, never less than zero, never equal to zero, just greater than. And there's your range. If you want to write the complete thing, you should write it as y is a real number such that y is greater than zero. You put the little braces on it. That's the college way of doing it. But I'm looking for y is greater than zero for this particular thing. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, this next example has something else going on. Now, our usual function has the form y equals b to the x. If there's a stretch, we just saw that the stretch would be over here. But what if you want to move it up and down left to right? Well, just like all the other functions we've learned, there's an h and a k for horizontal shift and vertical shift. The thing is, where are they? Where are they? Well, the horizontal shift for an exponential function is here. It's in the exponent. So if you have your x up here, x minus h will be part of the exponent here. And if you have a vertical shift, it'll be plus k down here. So what that means is that this means you're going to go down 4. And this, because horizontal shifts are always the opposite sign of what they appear, this means you're going to go to the right 2. Okay? So there is a horizontal shift and there's a vertical shift. There's no stretch on this one, so we're not going to worry about that. So how do you handle this? Well, you could make a table and you could do a whole bunch of adding and subtracting to the table, but there's an easier way to do this that you're not going to see in the book and you're probably not going to learn from other teachers, but I think this works a lot better and is a lot easier. What we're going to do is identify the fact that there is a, a vertical and a horizontal shift here, and we're going to take those and translate them into a new graph. Check this out. This first one here says, well, let's, let's do this one first here. This says negative 4, meaning down 4. What we're going to do is take our axes, our x and y axis, and move those before we do the graph. So what would you move down 4 spaces? Would you move your vertical axis down 4 spaces? That doesn't make any sense because it would still look exactly the same. You couldn't tell if you move the y axis down, it's still going infinitely up and down. You couldn't even tell that, that it moved. So if you're going to move down, it has to be the horizontal axis you're going to move down. And so what you're going to do is, for down 4, you're going to take your x-axis. Okay, This is your asymptote. Remember that? This is your runway. And you're going to move that down 4 spaces so now that it's going to be down here. And you're going to draw your new axis as a dotted line like this. This is your new horizontal asymptote. It's your new x-axis. And to the right too, well, that applies to the vertical axis, okay? Because you can't move your horizontal axis to the right. You wouldn't be able to even see it move. But we'll move the y-axis over to the right two spaces and also make it a vertical dotted line. Okay, so now I've taken care of the vertical shift by moving the horizontal axis down four spaces and the vertical axis over to the right four spaces. And now that I've taken care of these, now my graph is just y equals 3 to the x because I took care of this part and I took care of this part and this is all that's left and now I already know how to graph this just make a table so this is what I call the easy way of doing this okay uh, all right the book is going to tell you to make the table and then add the numbers and do all this other sort of thing this to me is much quicker so 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third 3 to the 0 is 1 and 3 to the 1 is 3 and that's it. Graph these, th these three points, but you're not going to graph them starting at 0, 0 here. You're going to start at 0, 0 here. This is now your new origin, your new x-axis, your new y-axis. And starting from here, 
negative one comma one third is going to be one box to the left, which is negative one, and up one third, which is right about there. Zero comma one, well now this is your new zero zero. So starting from here, starting from this new center, go up one, and there's your zero one. And then one comma three, once again, starting from the new xy uh, origin, it's going to be over one and up three, and there you go. And now here's your graph. You're going to draw your half parabola, and on the other side you're going to land the plane without touching the asymptote. And that's it. So when you have horizontal and vertical shifts, my advice to you is shift the axes. If it's a horizontal shift, then move the vertical axis. If it's a vertical shift, move the horizontal axis. And then once you have your new axes, and it won't necessarily be both, it could just be one thing that you're shifting, not both of them, but it doesn't matter. Whatever you end up with, that's your new XY axis and your new origin. And then just do your graph on that and you're done. Okay, one last one and we'll call it a day. Okay, this one is probably as hard as they get or as involved as they get. This has got everything. This has got a shift of left two, okay, uh, up three. It's got a stretch and it's got a flip. Okay, so this is the whole kit and caboodle. Now at its base, at its very simplest, this is y equals three to the x, meaning the parent here is y equals three to the x. So that's what you're gonna make a table for, just that. All this other stuff we're gonna do after you make the table or separate from making the table. So the first thing you wanna do is move your axes, all right? This says up three, so what I'm gonna do is take my horizontal axis and move it up three sp spaces here and put a new horizontal asymptote up here. This is up three. This also says left two, so I'm gonna move the vertical axis to the left two spaces. And now I have my new X, Y axis, okay? I have a new origin right here. This is the center, zero, zero now, not this anymore, this. And that means I can ignore that and I can ignore that, okay? Now, if you remember the stretch, the stretch we apply after we make our table. So let's make our table for just this part here. Okay, so let's get rid of that stuff there. We're gonna make our table for y equals three to the x. Okay, so x and y, negative one, zero and one, the same three numbers. This is gonna be three to the negative one, which is one third, three to the zero, which is one, and three to the one, which is three. That part did not change. But since we have this stretch number here, you're supposed to multiply all of these by the stretch number, which is two. But this is actually a negative two, so you can just include that negative. Okay, so basically whatever is over here, you're just gonna multiply it times your Y column, and that'll take care of everything. You'll automatically be flipping now. So one third times negative two is negative two thirds. One times negative two is negative two, and three times negative two is negative six. Let's graph now. Negative one comma negative two thirds. Negative one, starting from this origin here, go back one and go down two thirds. So about two thirds of a box is right about there. Zero comma negative two. Once again, starting from our new origin here. Zero comma negative two is gonna be right there. And then finally, one comma negative six, starting from this origin here, go over one and down one, two, three, four, five, six. And now hopefully you can see your three points that make up your parabola, but they're going down this time because it's been flipped. All right, so make your sideways parabola, or half parabola rather. And then on the other side, you're gonna get closer and closer to your asymptote, but not touch it. and we are done. Now what's the domain? You're gonna to have to do domain and range for the homework tonight. The domain for all of these functions is all real numbers because the X's that this thing covers are all the negative X's, all the positive X's and everything in between. The range on the other hand are all the Y's that this function travels through, but this function doesn't go any higher than you can see it right here, three. It's everything less than three, not equal to because it doesn't ever actually get to three. So it's y is less than three. That's your range. I'm not even gonna write it in the fancy way. We'll just leave it as y is less than three. Okay, that's it for today. See you at the next video.
Check this.